Welcome. Hi, Hello, Jessica. that was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for being with me and uh, with our audience. Oh my goodness, we're about nine people already. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so I just played a uh, uh, one of my favorite melody by Edward um, uh, Elgar, um, uh, English uh, uh, romantic composer. Uh, the The piece title is called "Lovers Greetings," and you can interpret. Uh, lovers to people who you love or uh were mem memorized um uh, john uh john today um congress congressman john lewis mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. and uh we're thinking about pageant and i we were thinking about people are now in in a lot of troubles financially because the pandemic so this is for all of you Thank you so much, Paget. So let me introduce Paget. I don't really need to introduce Paget because everybody knows Paget. <laughs> <laughs> so Paget uh, is an actor. She is a writer. Um, she's a hardcore young gen, hardcore young gen. And uh, she has her own television show before all these young stuff. And uh, she has an incredible youtube channel please subscribe paget yes thank you please thank you for that thing she needs to reach like 25k right i um yeah so i am i'm trying to reach 25k actually this was more of an idea of one of uh, my supporters his name's miles Patton. shout out to miles Patton, uh, who's going to be creating his own youtube channel soon um but he was like you know you should do like some sort of giveaway when you reach 25,000 cuz I'm not actually that I'm not actually that concerned with how many subscribers I reach like I, it's not something that I think about but he was like it would be nice you know to do that and he's trying to like help me set up a discord like basically just help set up more of a community interaction and um systems around that so that's how it got so yeah subscribe so that I can hit 25,000 <laughs> so I can give away a signed Andrew Yang math hat to yes. one of the people in my Discord. Yes, yes, I have um, NGN's math head, but I don't have a signature on it. Um, so uh, now, you, uh, Padre has a uh, very active um, uh, social media, and so you guys, all the descriptions are below at, at the YouTube channel here. And um, I have a question. Um, I have a lot of questions for Padgett. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was, I was like, I, I, had, I have been contemplating to, to, to decide or to see if I should contact uh, Padgett um, for a while. And then my philosophy is, if I don't contact Padgett, uh, she will not be on. If I get rejected uh she will not be on so getting rejection and not to contact her is the same thing so that's my theory you guys so if you want to be successful about something and uh, just learn this lesson <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean um you know it's just it, during the campaign things were crazy you know um but ching like i've been familiar with you for a long time like you were very active during the campaign as well nel nieves shout out to nel in the chat you know he's been he loves you you know he's been very supportive as well and he's like you know um so i i said yes to like being interviewed by you because like i'm very familiar with you but then but then nell was like oh i heard that you're going to be interviewed by her and she was like i'm so excited because you know i love her so you know um just i guess if you happen to catch uh, me on a good day or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. No, I don't know. I don't know. I honestly don't really know how I decide certain things. Sometimes I just don't yes. even see it to be quite honest. Yeah. I don't see it. but I happen to see your, the message that you sent me. Thank you. Thank you for checking your message. Uh, I know you're super busy. So now, um, you, um, your work is amazing and, um, oh, you. you're so brave. Uh, you're so out there. Uh, you look like you have a team of people, like you have a director, you have an editor, you have a cameraman, you have a researcher, you have makeup artist, you have a, a extra writer for you. So tell me, is that a true? <laughs> Wait, are you talking about like my YouTube channel on like Andrew <laughs> yeah. Bay and the News? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about you now, your work. Looks like you have a huge team there working for you. Well, I am so flattered, Ching, because my team is literally myself. So 
Uh, the cameraman is my tripod. Um, the script, the right, the new, the researcher is my brain. Sometimes when it's functioning properly, um, the editor are my fingers. Um, you know, my computer's doing like you know five jobs, and no, I'm just joking. But yeah, no, it's it's just it's just me. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I wish I had all those resources. That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, so it's really amazing. Um, now. Tell me, what is a typical, uh, like, you know, the pan pandemic situation? And we're mm -hmm. not talking about, you know, any no. situation yet. Um, like, like, what is your typical day like? Like, 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 how much time do you read and you have to oh. catch up on the news? Yeah. Because you are delivering all these very specific things to us. Well, thank, well, thank you, you so much so again. For, wait, am I echoing because I have I don't have earbuds in? Is yeah, I am echoing a little bit because for some reason in the middle of it, it goes to my computer uh, thing. Let me just go into fix it, okay? Because okay, my my, my yaddy, uh my yeah, I am on my yaddy supposedly, but somehow, or do I need to put on headphones? Maybe it will helpful be helpful. Okay, yeah. so let me see if I can. Reach back here in the store. I, stuff, I stuff like trash in there. I stuff a whole bunch of junk in there. Just so you guys now know that it's a highly functional <laughs> uh, dresser. Let's see. If, um, for some reason, I, I, uh, I supposed to hear you from my headphone, but my I hear you from my computer. I don't know. Why. Okay, is that is that better or no? Hold on a second. Let me make sure I'm in the right place. Uh, audio. Um, I'll do, yeah, the connection of, sorry about that, guys. Um, the, the connection of Yaddy sometimes, uh, it acts funny. I'm going to unplug it. Okay. And then, okay. Okay. Cause, uh, see, I'm, I'm supposed to be using this sucker, you know? <laughs> oh yeah. 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 Those are actually really good. Um, yeah, but, I but the one. connection. Uh oh, you have to unmute yourself now. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay, that's perfect. Is it better? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll because see. I don't hear it right now. Uh, but um, I'm so in answer to your question, yeah. like, um, uh, is, is that okay? So so nowadays, and literally, this has just been in the past week. I um I realized like because your your question like what are you doing during the lockdown and things have changed dramatically in so many different respects right so um you know the industry like so I am an actor and I am also a writer and um, acting for instance auditions have been totally like kind of what were put on hold and now they're starting up a little bit again so. It was only until last week that I'm like, you know what? I actually should probably set myself a schedule. So um, just a, another little bit of um, a reveal is that I have been a lazy AF during this lockdown. Like I, I'm talking about when it comes to exercise. So like I was like, yeah, I'm cool with only maybe exercising once a week when he forces me out of the house. Uh, so that has been like my life. And I'm just being honest about that. Um, and so last week I actually was like, you know what, maybe I need to wake up earlier. And so I actually, I will literally wake up. I will then um, do, an, do a small workout, very small one, you know, looking at free YouTube videos while I am also listening to some news, some podcasts, whatever comes up for that day. Um, and then I will like shower, you know, eat or whatever. And then I will look at the news and I will look at like, you know, Politico, The Hill, like all the different news. Um, headlines to see like what is going on generally. And then I'm going to try, and then I try to like, you know, synthesize it into something that I think is interesting or something that, you know, um, for that day has kind of sparked like my brain to start churning. And then, and then I'll just do a video. Um, I'll record a video. Um, and then I'll, I'll edit it. And usually like, I'll put it out like in the afternoon, depending on, you know, how much the video or how much research it required or how much it required as far as me just babbling on. Um, so, so that's usually how it works. And then I will sometimes do another video or I will work on something else that I have going on, um, do more research, or like, you know, looking up the news and everything like that. So I do kind of have to stay plugged in, but that's pretty much like what my day looks like. Cause then the rest of the afternoon and evening is just jumbled with stuff. Um, you know, admin think general things that I need to take care of in my life. <laughs> um, 
so yeah, that, that's how my days look like right now. And I'm hoping I'm able to kind of keep it up because otherwise before that I was just like all over the place. Like there was no rhyme and reason to how I approached my day. Yeah. <clears throat> you know how, um, you know how I rem I try to remember when was last time I uh, the first time I noticed you on uh, YouTube. I believe it's sometimes after I got involved uh, with the Yang Gang, and then I noticed your uh, your videos. You I look back at your videos. You started to make your first video on July the third of yes yes <laughs> very good research <laughs> That's a long time ago yeah. And then, uh, then I don't remember if I started watch July. I don't remember, but I just remember a uh, funny thing was at the very first, I remember you by the way you look, not because of your content, because oh. like you're so like attractive and you're oh my like, gosh. wearing <laughs> wearing these Makeup. thing, you know, <laughs> this thing, you know, like these clothing like like you know i'm an old fart you know in new york and you're a californian you know <laughs> yeah so, it was hot yeah. it was hot. Yeah, yeah. it was hot over here yeah. in the summer yeah um, yeah, yeah i you don't know, know if you remember. i actually remember yeah. you i remember I, I that something really mean you remember um, um i don't really i mean. don't know if it was mean but you were like it must be really hot over there <laughs> and i was like and, and you know what's so funny is it only occurred to me after I responded to you yeah. when I was like, oh, maybe she was actually like being mean. But when I read it, I was like, oh, yeah, it is hot over here. You know, I was, <laughs> so sometimes when people comment things that are supposed to be like sarcastic or mean yeah. or like whatever, yeah. sometimes yeah. like because I'm not always in that zone, I'm just like, I just look at yeah. it I'm like innocently like oh yeah, yeah okay yeah. interesting um yeah but you were so grateful you know you gracefully said you know it is hot here you know because i was trying to be mean like i didn't realize that like, why are you wearing so little clothes <laughs> 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 that's funny but anyway so i noticed you then first and then gradually you know um uh, more and more and then you know what you you it's your fault actually i went to iowa because i keep watching your channel and then you went to iowa and then you asked us to go so actually you were my really inspiration to to go to iowa well ching if, if it's my fault are you I'm just kidding <laughs> i'm just kidding Do you regret that you went oh i loved it yeah oh, i loved it I loved it. Yeah. It was it was a once in a lifetime type of experience I think for people who weren't involved in politics before that. Like when other like I'm not sure if I will necessarily ever go to Iowa again unless Andrew Yang did run in 2024 and Iowa was still the first state. I don't think I would ever do that again in my life. I don't think I would ever feel inspired enough to do that to feel like that kind of um pressure but also excitement to do it. And so I'm really hoping that people who did go to Iowa, even if it was because they felt peer pressured from me, it like, you know, they feel like it actually added something to their human life experiences. Yeah. Because I think I think it was a special moment for the the Yang campaign and the Yang gang. Yeah. I think it's uh it's it's movement. It's a movement. It's uh almost feel like a, it's a like a group of people uh, rebel, you know, and yeah. leave their That home. was part of the fun, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that like, we're not like you guys, like we're fighting the good fight. We're ready to get in the trenches. Like, we don't know what the F we're doing, but we're here. We're figuring <laughs> yeah. the, out, the shiz out and we are here and we're gonna like own this. Like that was the attitude mm -hmm. um, of the Yang Gang, I feel like at, during that period of time. And I loved it. Cause like by nature, I'm sure some people who are familiar with my channel already know this about me. I am a little bit, um, not anti-authoritarian, but I'm a little bit more of like the rebellious. Like I don't like to just say what everyone else is saying necessarily or jump on the bandwagon. I like to be the person who's doing the thing that um, is different and, but is also right, you right. know, not just to be antithetical, to be like whatever, but just, just because um, I think there's something dangerous about um, just kind of going with the majority of how people think because you can get really lazy that way. And a lot of things can, a lot of corruption, a lot of bad actors can somehow like, you know, co-op that movement and take it over for their own interests. And then it turns into something that it should never have been. Um, but that's just my nature. But anyway, mm -hmm. that was a tangent to say that that was a very special period of time. 
<laughs> yeah, there's a, there's, there's a, so the, there's the, the unknown of going, and then, you know, you only know a few people are going with you. Like, right. uh, I went with Nick and uh, Yunjie, uh, uh, this is our team, and then we met some more people from New York, and then you meet all kinds of people from all different states, and it, it's a very uh, humbling, actually, experience for me, is watching people go out there in the cold in the snow to canvassing for andrew yan in the middle of nowhere yeah you know and uh, it's it's really it's really yeah people put their heart out uh young gans yeah so it's just amazing now you um you started it uh like july 3rd of 2019 that video i think that was your first video you talked about 10 things about ngn how wonderful how great why people have to listen you know uh, yeah. To support yeah. him. do you do you have more things to add on or uh do you at certain point do you ever disappoint it about ngn oh um well, the one thing that I would have to add to that, well, you know, if I were to do it all over again, because I just know a little bit more about his policies, I would have maybe done it a little bit more policy focused. But um, at the same time, a part of me thought that the reason why I was somewhat accessible to some people was because I didn't just focus on policies and it didn't sound like I was a policy wonk or because I wasn't I, and I'm not and I wasn't political at that time. Um, but I would add more like relevancy to some of his policies like that we kind of need right now and, and the emergency aspect of it. Um, but um, the times when like I was maybe disappointed with Andrew Yang, you know, it's it's so and then now what I, like there were moments when I was disappointed. Right. There were moments when I was disappointed with the campaign. There were moments when I was like, oh, my God, they shouldn't have spent it on that. Um, why aren't they more in Iowa? All this stuff. Right. And people who are really close to the campaign were really following like the details of what was going on within the campaign staff and everything like that. They all felt the same exact way I felt. Maybe I voiced it. Um, I, I know I tried really not to hard, really not to voice it publicly because I just didn't think that was good at the time. But um you know, when I look back, though, at the whole thing, and, and I and I see people come out and say, you know, these things aren't helping, like, that's not helping. Um, and like, now there's like, sometimes in the Yang Gang, a little bit of a bitterness, like, oh, it's because of you, it's because of your GoFundMe, or like some random channel or something like, <laughs> like, you know, that Andrew Yang didn't win it. And I'm looking at it now. And I'm like, you guys realize that none of us could have made him win. <laughs> or made him lose like we were <laughs> up against so damn much that there was nothing that even within the campaign that they could have done i don't think looking back that would have necessarily guaranteed a win or even guaranteed him have that much more of a shot because what we were up against was just so much in terms of name recognition um mainstream media blackout none of that was within our hands at all so there was no one Yang gang, single Yang gang or Yang gang group, you guys. There was no one person in his Yang st campaign staff that could have made a difference ultimately in the campaign. Unless, of course, you're taking into account this whole big pandemic situation we're in. And if he would have stuck it out, who knows? Maybe he would have gotten some more votes. But we all, I think, fundamentally understand that the, the establishment and the media just... Um, we're going to just give him so much and we have no idea if that could have actually propelled him for a victory, an ultimate victory, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> so um, how serious he will be running for 2024? Um, you know, I've heard varying things about this. You know, I, this is what's so difficult, Ching, is that we all are now saying, like, we put so much into 2020 mm -hmm. that I feel like we're all now, like, just looking for, and I am too, I'm, like, ready to roll up my sleeves for 2024, um, you know, starting in 2020, I guess, 2022. But there are so many different factors that could play into him potentially not wanting to run in 2024. I think, you know, he has made somewhat of a promise to say that he would if, you know, he sees that the Democratic Party is not stepping up and doing what it needs to do for the people. Mm -hmm. But there is definitely a chance that he's not going to run in 2024. Like, let's say that he does run for mayor of New York City. 
Um, you know, and that's maybe a possibility that has been floating around in 2021. Um, you know, is he going to then step down and then like say, I'm now going to run for president in 2024, especially if we're looking at, you know, Joe Biden's VP, like, you know, running in 2024. So you'd have to run up against a dem another Democrat or would somehow he like try and convince that person who's running um, you know, hey, look, these are the policies we absolutely need. That person say, yeah, 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 no, I'm totally for it, Andrew. I'm totally, totally cool. We want you as part of the administration. And they basically just keep him off to the side and convince him not to run. Mm -hmm. you know? So I think there's there's a possibility there where he could be sidelined again and, um, you know, be made to think that other people are going to uh, step up in a yeah. way that would like let him not run. But they don't, are they actually sincere about it? I have no idea. There, there are several different reasons why I think there's a possibility that he might not, but I am hoping and expecting that he's going to, no matter what happens, you know, this year. Yeah. I, um, I, <clears throat> I went to, after Iowa, uh, I want to stay longer. And then I couldn't because I have some students to take care of and stuff. So, and then I decided I'm going to go to, uh, from Iowa, I'm going to go to New Hampshire because it's closer to New York City. So I went, uh, anyway, uh, I spent, I was going there for like three days. I ended up for three weeks. Oh my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah because I stayed uh, with uh, Jack Chen. Have you ever met him? I Jack think Chen. I have. Yeah, he's oh, I really think cool. I definitely have. He's like yeah. he's a really energetic guy. Yeah, Chinese, uh, he's Chinese from Taiwan. And he, his wife is Laura Chen. Um, they have three kids. So he's a, uh, he was a Republican before he uh, became a hardcore young man. Um, so he housed uh, lots of a young men in his house, including oh um, staff, a lot of staff stayed in his place. Wow. Yeah. So I, um, so when, when I was in his house, <clears throat> I was inspired. I don't know. I was kind of also naive. Um, I finally bought yet 2020 license plate. Like I was in his house, I was on computer, you know, I bought that thing. And then, you know, before you know, the next week, Andrew Yun dropped out. Oh my God. Yeah. You know what? I, I know, I know that like other people have also had that situation. Like Stephen Ho, I remember he was part of the Silicon Yang gang. Yeah. He was that two days before he dropped out, Andrew Yang dropped out. He was sending huge posters, freeway, hang, yeah. freeway posters yeah. over to all across this country. Yeah. And that would have costed him like, you know, hundreds of dollars to do that. Yeah. And he was like making that effort to do that two yeah. days before Andrew Yang dropped out. And I'm like, oh my God, the number of people who have invested so much, yeah, like money, time, energy, resources, and everything like that um, to move forward through New Hampshire, no matter what happens, yeah. are going to probably feel like crap. Like, yeah. you know, we were ready to continue. We were ready to keep going. But ultimately, yeah. I think Andrew Yang given everything that was, you know, happening right at that moment, he did what was best for yeah. his campaign and for the Yang gang because he felt bad about continuing to ask for donations when his chances were, you know, not there. Yeah. From his perspective. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so I, <clears throat> I was like re religiously kept an envelope when I returned to New York that envelope of I got, you, they give you two license plate from New York State. Uh, so I didn't want to open. So I found the best uh, uh, situation. So Jack Chen and Laura came and then Edward, also New Hampshire, a young guy came. So we had a ceremony. Oh, I'm gonna cry. So we, oh opened, my God. <laughs> we, we opened the goddamn envelope. <laughs> I take the license plate out, and then, and then later on, you know, my husband put it on my car anyway. So my car has Yen 2020. On. I mean, you can still do that. Like you can. Huh? Still, I still wear a math visor yeah. when I go out. Yeah. You know, I yeah. still. I'm I, like, I have no problems wearing the YouTube Andrew Yang yeah. shirt when I'm going out too. like, it's just, it's, it's still, it's still relevant because he still yeah. might run and people, and also his ideas are so much more relevant now than ever. So I have, yeah. I have no problem representing, uh -huh. you know, Yang 2020 or Andrew Yang right yeah. now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So great. Thank you so much. So um, now 
um, I wanted to ask you some questions about 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 you. Um, you are first generation American. Mm -hmm. Your parents came to from Korea. Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. You did your research. Um, yeah, they, they actually came. So, <laughs> so my dad, he, uh, he came over to study in the States. Or, no, no, no. Sorry. Sorry. Wow. I need to reeducate myself, but no, he actually, um, he actually grew up on a mili an American military base in Korea when, since he was very young. Uh -huh. So he was very, um, so he, you know, he speaks English perfectly fluently and everything like that. Um, because, you know, ever since the age of five or something, he mm -hmm. grew up on American military base and oh, then he came okay. over to the States, you know, um, a little bit after that. And then my, then my mom, she came over when she was around 14, um, didn't speak English. And they met, you know, um, freshman year of UCLA, uh, their college. And, um, but yeah, I'm first generation. So I'm, but, but my parents. Do you yeah. speak Korean? Um, unfortunately, it is a point of shame. I, I do not, um, but oh. you don't have to remind me how shameful it is because I'm in Koreatown. So other Korean Americans will remind oh. me. Yeah, of yeah. How that is. <laughs> <laughs> you can always learn. I've tried, Ching. I've really, yeah. really actually tried. And, is it hard? Um, is it really hard? For me, it's hard. Like, mm -hmm. I don't, for me, it's hard. Like, I can't remember anything. The only thing I remember how to say in Korean is I don't know how to speak Korean. And I don't even <laughs> to say it very well. I don't even pronounce it well. So even when I say it to people, they're like, what? <laughs> it's like okay i got it i got it you really don't <laughs> that's funny that's funny and may i ask are you this only child no i am a middle child of three daughters so i have two sisters oh. i'm a sandwich okay so so you you're like I, earlier i said you're so brave you're so innovative you're uh you are very um what i say you you don't take no seems like for answers. Where <laughs> where does that come from? Is it from your mom or from your dad? Um, that's a really good. It's a really interesting question. First of all, because um, I have to I have to wonder about the premise of the question because I definitely have to take no for an answer when I'm in the entertainment world. Like if someone says no, we we don't want you, or no, we're not going to buy your script, then I have to be like I can't be like. No, you have to. Like, so I have to take no for an answer. Do I like it? No. But um, uh, when it comes with uh, when it comes to you know, I think you mean like the hard headed nature that I have, mm -hmm. and and kind of just like the brazen nature I have. I'd say that that probably comes an element from both, but I would say definitely a little bit more so from my dad because my dad is like. Um, I mean, he's the type of guy, if you confronted him when he was younger, he would definitely take, like, he would definitely get into a fist fight with you, right? Like, he is not afraid to get to, he's not afraid of conflict. In fact, sometimes I think, you know, sorry, dad, but like, sometimes I feel like he kind of welcomes conflict on some level, you know, because he's felt, but I think that comes from, and I don't know if you've experienced this, Ching, but it comes from a feeling of, you know, maybe, um constant uh discrimination like while you're growing up constantly having to prove yourself in a, some way and your value in some way simply because you don't look like you know the majority and so i think it does come from that deep-seated feeling of having to constantly feel like he has to prove himself um mm -hmm. you know among among a, a dominated like a white society let's put it that way yeah yeah Wow. So um, now earlier we were talking about uh, uh, when we first met for the first, you know, three minutes uh, before the show, we were mentioned about like, um, you know, I don't see enough entertainment people, actress, mm -hmm. willing to talk about politics openly, willing to, you know, put themselves out there, um, you know, time after time. Do you know why? I think I have a very, very strong suspicion as to why that is. So you might see the occasional Alyssa Milano. You might, but she's, I mean, come on. Like Hollywood, 
okay, I mean, there's a lot to unpack there, but Hollywood is looked at as a very democratic liberal industry. Now, whether or not that's true or whether or not most of that is a facade, I'm going to leave that up to for you guys to speculate on. But if you're openly like, you know, Democrat, you know, I think that's the safest stance to be in when you are in the entertainment industry. That is not the same way if you're supporting Trump or anything like that. I'm not supporting Trump, but in general, um, the safe play is to just not talk about politics ever, not have anything political on your social media, unless, of course, it has something to do with Black Lives Matter, something that is popularized in the mainstream liberal media at that moment in time. But if you are presenting an opposing, a conflicting, you know, a challenging position at all to what is um, popularized in Hollywood at the moment in the political climate, then you are going to be like, Eh, like cancel right so there have been many of my content that has probably definitely crossed that line um maybe it was stupid of me to do it i don't i, I guess that time will tell to an extent but that is the reason why i believe a lot of people especially if they haven't established themselves yet why they are unwilling even if they feel very strongly about an issue to ever ever publicly state it to ever publicly like you know even like i remember one of my friends who was like you know trying to be an actor um he recorded someone saying something kind of political and he was like oh my gosh does that does that guy like want to never work in this town again and he was like you should delete that off of your phone because i happen to record it he's like delete it off the phone if you want that guy to have a career and i'm thinking to myself are you freaking kidding me like this is just like that's i mean that's like thought thought policing on like another level um and it's and it's making us all dumber you know it's making us all like just sheep um, and so there's a part of me that's like, eh, maybe I shouldn't have, or maybe I shouldn't do this or that. But then there's another part of me that's like, how stupid is it that we all feel like we are, um, you know, we're kind of like slaves to a system and that requires us to not actually be able to voice our independent voices and thought, you know, like that's not necessarily a great, <laughs> it's not a great like, um, society to kind of promote like for our future health because clearly the way things we've been doing has not been working so we do need I think some dissenting opinion or people to tell it like how they see it you know yeah thank you thank you so um <clears throat> all right so let me um go back to uh, we have uh, quite a few uh let me go back to see if we missed people's uh comments or stuff or uh questions Oh, oh wow that's a lot okay so um by the way when i'm scrolling down please if you have not subscribed uh jewel media channel please do and hit the bell button if you yeah and uh please uh subscribe um <clears throat> paget um keggis um channel uh, let's help her to reach 26,000. <laughs> oh, 20, oh, okay. I was just going to say that. I mean, like, why not pump it up to 26? Like, I'm down with that. <laughs> yeah. So I am at the beginning of the thing. Thank you, Yinji. Thank you, Niall. Thank you, Nick. Um, um, these are all greetings. Uh, Brian, thank you. DJ ELF7. What is your first name? Sorry. Um, uh, DJ and Ryan, um, so it's not echoey that much. Okay, can you see the questions, Paget? Yes, I can okay. actually. Okay. okay, so let's see if we see any questions. Um, okay, someone asked, uh, DJ Elf asked, wait, you don't use creative artists or whatever that agency is. So creative artist agency, like they can actually have political figures like like for instance i think um van jones is represented by one of these agencies but like that is because they're not trying to be an act like we all know that they're political right um and also they're democrat i mean he's a democrat um and andrew yang is also repped by caa i believe um i do have an agency but have i shared with them my channel or do they know about it i actually don't know they might and i i, wow. I don't know i um, but I do have an agency. That's how I get auditions for acting things. So yes, I do have an agency, but here's the thing. The agent just gets you the audition. They just set it up for you. So you audition, you maybe will then meet with the producers, director, whatever. And it's, 
it's behind closed doors that they all talk about you. They will research you. They will look at you on um, social media, online, your, you know, everything about you. Um, and then they will make a decision. Now, like the biggest thing would be if I, if like, if I said something against Black Lives Matter, if I said anything against, um, if I said anything that could be construed as, uh, you know, taking a certain strong political stance on something that's very liberal, uh, yeah, I could very well be blacklisted, but um, I haven't really done that. Um, but I, to what degree they care, I'm not sure, but I have heard that it is an issue, that it is a thing. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm still scrolling uh, to see if there's any uh, questions. We have lots of comments. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to see all of you here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Oyster. Huh? There's a O R Y S I M A J A. I know it's a uh, you know? Orisimaja. Or or oh, Orisimaja. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I know that. I know him. Yeah. Oh, he said, I, I did not know about Paget until the day Andrew Yen dropped out from my, oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, vegan sing. Uh, what? Vegan sing. And I met Chin when I met you now when we went to the view oh okay um i wish you i wish i uh, know your first name sorry all right so um let's see what else i'm keeping uh, looking through people if you have a question um, oh so Uri Simaja, actually that's a made-up name i remember he said it was like an alien name that he made up a long time ago but he said that his real name is jay lynn jay lynn oh okay. um, for yang on facebook and um uh let's see yeah i don't see any other questions i don't think didn't oh, peak uh my friend uh yunji uh ask you how ubi will help artists and musicians oh well i mean <laughs> like I, I mean come on guys no i mean that's a, well, <laughs> no i mean i personally know of you know and myself too because you know right now i live in a situation that's incredibly fortunate but i'm going to be honest and say that's like because of steve right um but before that before we moved you know out here i was living in a really run down dingy apartment that i was having to be the manager of so i could just basically pay my rent um they discounted the rent half off if i managed all the uh, apartments in there and so financially it's not like you know i know what it's like to be a struggling artist you know um and, and feel like you can't necessarily pay your bills and while you're trying to balance being creative and that's like a very very difficult situation to be in because it's very difficult to be creative when you're financially struggling or you're worried about how you're going to pay your bills but you know that is just my experience but then i know so many other people who i became friends with especially people in theater when i was doing some theater in the la area and like they were literally like i mean it was a struggle for them to pay their bills and i felt so bad that you know um they were like constantly like worried if they were gonna get fired from their temp job. Like they had two jobs at the same time and they had to worry about getting an audition and you know, just giving them a baseline. So like maybe, I don't know, they could all just rent a place together and be creative and spend that time in a positive way as opposed to feeling so incredibly depressed because a lot of them were deeply depressed. I remember, right? Because they felt like, so stuck they felt stuck um and that would be a huge lifesaver for so many artists um in this town but across the country just make them feel like they have some bit of hope you know in in being able to pursue something that they love to do and they've already sacrificed so deeply to try and do it you know so yeah it would help artists immensely feel like just safe and secure yeah i um i don't like to talk about money but uh i constantly thinking like how do people survive during this time 
uh, because, you know, a lot of, say, people's restaurants closed or people cannot go to work, you know, they, uh, but some people do get government help, right? Mm -hmm. Unemployment and also the, uh, the $600. So, um, but not everybody is qualified. So, so I don't know. It's, it's a tough, I think for the, for the first time in like 20 years, I've been here, uh, New York 20 years, I would worry about my, my habit of expense. Like if I would about to go to a happy hour to drink, Mm -hmm. I would say I can go home to drink. I can drink a whole bottle of wine <laughs> instead of <laughs> one glass of wine. I think that way just because this the pandemic, you know, um, be, because, you know, uh, so actually my husband lost 75% uh, of his uh, work. You know, so he only works 25%. So anyway, um, so it's difficult. Now, uh, I wanted to ask um, Paget, do you, you're, you're so uh, like, Okay, how how did you become like so organized in political thoughts? Like, oh, like, you think I'm organized? Yeah. Did you get oh. like? Did you have a degree? Because you're an actor. No, you went to UCLA. UC I, oh, I Berkeley. went to UC Berkeley, Berkeley. but um, okay, I'm not going to tell you something that's kind of embarrassing about that. But like, no. Um, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's be let's be but okay so i'll yeah. just tell you generally i did okay. ultimately de get my degree in history i'm not going to tell you that i remember anything from what i learned because i did not i'm just going to be real honest and yeah. i didn't do half of my reading um i honestly just and they can't take away my degree it doesn't even matter anyway but i probably only read like a third of what i was supposed to read and i just bullshitted my way through all those essays um <laughs> But I did decently out of it. So um, <laughs> so that teaches you something about life. No, I'm just joking. Um, I, uh, I don't actually think I'm that organized, actually. So when I do my videos, if you, if you can see that I have to cut edit it because I sometimes go on long tangents. Like I will go on a very, and, and Steve knows this about me. My close friends probably have witnessed this in me where I will go on a long tangent as I'm explaining something and then come back around finally. I'm probably doing that right now. <laughs> so I'm actually not that organized in my thought. It's uh -huh. just that I edit it. So mm. it seems like maybe I'm a little bit organized in my thought because I have like so many thoughts going on at the same time that I kind of want to all express it at once and it oh. doesn't work out so well. But thank you for um, thinking that I am. But no, I do not have a degree in that. Um, in fact, I actually do not like public speaking. I, uh, I've never really loved public speaking. I do have performance anxiety sometimes, um, you know, when I would sing and stuff like that and go on a stage and actually I would get incredibly nervous. So it's not something that I thought that I would ever, ever do because I honestly, to be honest, Ching, I, I do not have a history in politics. As you guys know, I don't love politics as you guys probably know, but I don't think you can afford at this moment in time in history to not kind of be aware of what's going on. You know, have you ever considered running for officer, public office? I did. I was considering that actually, I can even say like maybe a month ago, I was considering that. And I was looking at a certain district. Um, I obviously David Kim is in my district and I think he's going to win. So I'm not planning on running in my district. I was looking at, I was thinking about a different district, like a little bit north of me. The reason why I actually said, you know what, I'm not going to do it is because I, I, um, and actually Scott Santon just happened to retweet her on like the day that I decided I'm probably not going to do it because like I saw that the person who's actually running in that district supports universal basic income and she, her, um, her demographic is more well supported to run in that district than me. Let's put it that way. So I don't, I'm not going to run for anything unless I actually feel like I have a very good shot at winning because the pieces are there. No one else is challenging this person who I would actually agree with on most issues. I just do not see that opportunity right now. And I just don't want to, you know, um, take away resources and time and energy, you know, from the Yang gang, if I don't feel like that, that is there for me. So, uh, hypothetically, um, if Andrew Yang, if Andrew Yang won, um, I want you to have a position in White House. Oh my gosh, what position <laughs> is that? 
like Which the, position do you think you are I, suitable? <laughs> Guys, I'm walking to the Oval Office right now. <laughs> oh, seriously, you could be the spokesperson, maybe something like that. Oh, I think right. okay, I think that would be awesome to an extent. I think I would probably alienate a lot of people. Be like, who is this random chick? Um, and then I think some people would be like. Why are there so many Asians here? <laughs> like, why am I then? Like, is she like an extension of Andrew? Again? Is, she, is she his sister? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Relatives. It's all Andrew Yen's relatives. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, tell us a little bit um, about your thing, Cat Lovers. Los oh, Angeles. oh my gosh, Cat Loves LA. Yeah, um, that was. Uh, that was actually probably the thing that I have accomplished so far, whether or not that's impressive, that I'm probably the most proud of. Um, I'm very proud of the Yang Gang as a whole, but I can't take credit for any of that, really. But um, I'm, I'm incredibly proud of this web series that I created. It's a rom romantic comedy web series with Asian American leads before Crazy Asians came out. Um, <laughs> that uh, I, I produced, I wrote, I starred in, I half kind of directed i found the locations for i did the crap I, I basically did a lot of the work behind it um with very very little and so that is yeah it's i mean if you want to go check it out it's on youtube cat loves la with a k um but it's just a romantic comedy web series and it was at a time when you know we didn't see asian american leads in romantic comedies like that was a foreign concept because crazy rich asians wasn't even talked about at that time and so I felt like I love romantic comedies. I love, you know, When Harry Met Sally, Bridget Jones' Diary. Those were my favorite things growing up. But I felt like there was a really big issue when I started writing things that I was like, wait, why am I not writing this person as an Asian American? Like why, whenever I write something, do I always write them as a white girl or a white guy? And I'm like, that's so screwed up that like I'm Asian. I love these things. I'm writing something that I can create out of my figment of my imagination and I'm writing them as white people. Um, it, it kind of like was like, it threw me for this like big sort of loop where I'm like, what have I done to myself? How have I brainwashed myself with mainstream media, um, you know, in Hollywood? And so when I did that web series, I was just like, I just want to, I just want to represent Asian America right now and not have it be like, oh, we have to deal with Asian culture so much, or, oh, it has to be inaccessible to other people. It's like, no, so this is just the mainstream story. It just happens to have Asian American people in it, you know, in a multicultural environment. Yeah, it was great. So um, when you were a uh, actor or, or studying actress or uh, whatever the theater things you learned, and um, do you, did, he, did he teach you how to uh, use camera, like camera angle or uh, lighting stuff? Because your uh, current setting is perfect. <gasps> oh, I know I, you don't like it. I know you don't like it or whatever. It takes a while for you to, but it's just so beautiful. Oh, I want to know what kind of setting do you have? Like what kind of camera you have? What okay, kind of I will tell you all what I have. All right. Okay. Um, so I have, and this is actually from when I did Cat Loves Life. So this is, so that's why I made this investment. It wasn't for a YouTube channel, but I have, but if you're going to ever make a really big investment in anything, honestly, investing in lenses, in camera lenses and cameras in general, best investment, they hold their value extremely well. Um, so I have a Canon Mark IV, uh, I have a Canon Mark IV that was used. I bought it used. Um, and then I also have, I'm using the zoom lens, the Canon 24 to 70 to 70 millimeter zoom lens, which was also used, I believe <laughs> I'm using a ring light that I bought. Okay. Don't kill me guys, but it was on Amazon and then um, it was a basic ring light. And then I just have this hair light here. Actually, it's just a regular lamp uh -huh. I just put near yeah. me. Yeah, and yeah. then back there, I have this like standing lamp back there. I yeah. stuffed a whole bunch of pretty things on this uh, bookcase. Yeah. I have a blanket that I hung up with tape. I see. And then like a piece of random leaf decoration mm -hmm. thing that mm -hmm. I hung up with string. Oh, good, good. <laughs> and so I, I just debunked like my entire setup right now and it's nothing super impressive. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, 
But uh, I think the biggest, most important thing for anyone who's starting a YouTube channel, it's not the camera, it's not the lens, it's not um, any of the, I mean, the background actually matters a lot. I would say the two most important things is number one is the lighting. Number one, the number one above and beyond lighting. And then I'm gonna say, I'm gonna actually say the background and then I'm gonna say the audio and then I'm gonna say the camera. So if you're ever gonna invest in something, invest in lighting, invest in audio. You can use your iPhone, <laughs> you can edit it on free editing apps. And then if you get to a point where you want to like, you know, go up a, go up a stage, then I would just say, um, then invest in a camera. Mm, yeah. Great point. Oh, great. it's a five D Mark four Paget. Okay. What did I say? I don't know what I said. You said 40. Oh, it's a five D. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. Um, no. okay. So, um, I, um, we have a few questions, but, um, now, I have a question. Oh, Jack Chan is here. Hi, Jack. Oh, what, where, where you, you were talking about him. Yeah. Ask Paget if he if she has ever reached out to Yan for a role <laughs> for the next four years. What do you mean? Wait, for the next four years of what, Jackie? Yeah, a, a role for the next four years. I guess uh, meaning uh, cabinet or something. I don't know. But he's not... I mean, uh, <laughs> no, I do know some people were lobbying on my behalf to get me hired in the campaign, which I only found out after the campaign, oh, oh. but he didn't deal with hiring. So he would pass it off to yeah. other high level people in the campaign and they probably just ignored him. So yeah. Yeah. that's the only thing I can tell you about that is that people did try um, mm -hmm. who knew the campaign and it just got ignored. <laughs> so I don't think there's like that much of an interest in hiring me as part of the campaign as I've learned. Um, so I'm not gonna probably push that. Trumper for Yan is here. He has a question for you. Oh, Trumper for Yang! Hi, Hi. Trumper for um, Yang. Ask Paget if she would vote <laughs> for Trump if Trump said he would back a UBI. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait, if he said he would Trumper or if, if he actually did? He did. If he did. Yes. Really? Yes. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> I'm absolutely butt serious actually at this point. <laughs> oh my god. Because let's think about let's think about it as as um let's like back up and think about what that would mean. So if he was serious, now Trumper for Yang, my biggest question there is that he would never ever actually follow through with it, right? So that that's why I would actually be like, uh, I don't know. But if you're saying that he would follow through with it and we would have this being implemented, it would be the first time that Democrats and Republicans, first of all, agreed on something. And then second of all, it means like, you know, Trump is probably gonna win in 2020. And that means that the bright side of that would be that everyone would have a UBI and then in 2024, someone would be able to run against him. And that would be maybe an Andrew Yang, right? So Andrew Yang would also be running on universal basic income. Maybe he would increase it. Maybe he would add all the other great policies he has too. And so it would set up actually a situation that would be ideal for Andrew Yang to run in 2024. It would give us UBI and it would help us through a very tough time that we're looking at like in the next five years. So my, my answer, just a practical answer would be yes. So this is a related question <clears throat> by Inge. Inge is my uh, young and uh, friend. Um, did you see it? Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, question for how can you both use your platform to get more people on board with Yang Gang or promote? That is a very, very, very good question. Um, do you want to answer it first or? No, you answer. So this is actually kind of interesting because um, you know, I've actually heard Kai Watson, you know, Kai who blew up on TikTok, him saying this and his TikTok has zero to do with the Yang Gang and Andrew Yang. Okay. And I think that is excellent because he has built an amazing platform that if Andrew Yang did run in 2024, imagine like then that's another platform that could kind of promote him subtly and be like, Hey, Andrew Yang, come on my show. So, you know, I think there. There is some actual like um, 
there is something to be said for venturing outside of Andrew Yang and the Yang gang in your platform and media into things that people are generally interested in that have nothing to do with it because you might actually attract some people you would have never attracted, right? Like when I first launched my channel, I remember there were some women, women specifically, cause I'm a woman. They probably like, Oh, like, this randomly came up my algorithm because she's a woman. I don't know why. And they clicked on it and they were like, that is how they got involved in Andrew Yang's campaign is because of my one video. Right. And they weren't interested in politics. So like, and that was my first video. So the algorithm probably just showed it to like random women. Um, but you know, I think there's something to be said for trying to venture out a little bit more and get a little bit broader or specific in something that has nothing to do with Andrew Yang and universal basic income. And then kind of like, if you can reach a different audience, then kind of like, you know, build it so that in 2024, you're bringing more people into the fold. You're not just preaching to the choir. I, but I think there's a lot of value in media still having that core Yang Gang audience because we all want to stay connected. We all want to stay like in the know about everything that's going on. And, and we want to foster that Yang Gang community so that it can just be stronger the next time around. So it's a very delicate it's a balance, right? Um, Kai did his own thing. That's great. You know, I'm just kind of doing whatever I feel like, <laughs> which I don't know, whatever. Um, but Ching, you know, you're a filmmaker as well. So, I mean, you don't have to do everything that's focused around Andrew Yang, the Yang gang, universal basic income, but um, you can still embrace universal basic income, you know, in your videos or, you know, in your ideas that you're right. promoting. Right, right. By the way, um, I'm going to tell you guys, uh, we're uh, Padre has to go very soon. All right, so I have some uh, fun questions. For, uh, I want to let you know, actually, Padre, do you know um, when I started to get to know Andrew Yen uh, since last, uh, the first time, the last May, and then for about 10 months, I made 120 videos about Andrew Yen's calls. One wow. Yeah, yeah. 110. 20, yeah. 20. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Some of them are, are live streaming because I live stream in Iowa and also in New Hampshire. Yeah, but yeah. Some of them just, I made short films, you know, not just like throw things together. So live streaming, it's good. You don't have to edit, right? <laughs> yeah, that's that's the positive of live streaming, yeah. definitely. Yeah. So, yeah. So um, now, uh, thank you guys all for tuning in. I I I uh, I want to have uh, I, I want to have my fun question and gossip question. So tell tell me a little bit about your partner Steve. <laughs> oh my God! What is there to tell you other than sometimes he wears so pants, cute. And sometimes he doesn't. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> it's kind of a running joke, jo uh, Ching, that like he's some like. Like right now, he's probably on a phone conference in his underwear. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm not actually even joking. Yeah. So like one time he like accidentally walked in on a Zoom session call in yeah. his underwear and he didn't realize it. <laughs> 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 um, but uh, but anyway, um, yeah, uh, Steve. So like I think some of you guys might know this already. Actually, probably if you're watching this, you already know that Steve and I actually met. We met on a dating app and... Um, I was 20 minutes late to our date. We met at the Boba time in Koreatown, actually. Um, I was 20 minutes late. I wasn't expecting anything from, I actually was a little bit like, oh, he's British. He might be like weird. And so I actually was like, I actually told him beforehand, I'm like, by the way, I'm only going to be able to stay for like a certain amount of time. I got to leave. <laughs> and so I could get out of it. And so um, I arrived very late trying to find parking, like got out of the car, like walked over to him, didn't even really look at him. Um, and then he asked, and it was only when he asked me, oh, what do you want to drink that I actually looked at him and I like, and then um, I looked at him and it was his eyes. It was like the kindness in his eyes that I was like, oh, he actually is like, seems like a nice human being. Cause you know, before that I was just so incredibly um, jaded. I just thought that everyone who I was going to probably meet would probably not be worth worthwhile, you know, at that moment in time. And that's how we met. Like it was very... Um, you know, it wasn't that like scandalous or anything like that, but, um, we actually met July 5th. Wow. So, that, so we've been together. Oh yeah. We've been together for over five years now. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah. So, but he's, he's really, he's nice. He's a little bit, um, he's a little bit, uh, you know, uh, uh what was I going to say? Set in his way. He's, a bit that way. he's very accommodating to you. I see. Really? Yes. Mm. Yeah. You, you, it's like, he always let you talk. And then it's like, okay, he's a very supportive role, you know, seems like. And I, I noticed one thing is he's so cool. He always wears Yang gear. Oh, he does. You know what, you guys? I'm sorry. He is better <laughs> at wearing Yang gear than I am. He yeah. will always wear a Yang shirt in all of his videos, in every video yeah. than I do. Um, because I just like, I don't like feeling constricted about what I want to wear. I just wear whatever I want. So, um, but he's awesome. Like in that way, he's incredibly supportive, but I needed to let you guys know that he was actually not that supportive of Andrew Yang in the first three weeks that I joined the Yang gang. Cause he was very skeptical. I had to actually, um, I had to convince him that it was the right move. So that's wonderful. So how do you deal? One more question. You, you have to go because it's already 501. Um, I mean, my time, your time, 201. You yeah. Have... Yeah. In a few minutes. Okay. Okay. So how do you deal with this space? I bet your house is big, but it's not that big in this pandemic time. Everybody have to, you have to see him 24 seven. Oh that man. Cool? That's a good question. I mean, you know, I'm sure you have to deal with that too, but, um, you know, like, I mean, we're, we're fortunate. We live in a two bedroom, like apartment situation. Um, so like I'm in one of the bedrooms right now and he's up like in a loft area where he works and everything like that, you know? So a lot of times actually, we don't actually talk all the time throughout the day. Um, and it is a little bit, it does feel actually very confiding. I'm not going to lie, but I know a lot of people have it like a million times worse. So I'm, I'm in zero position to even complain. So I'm not complaining about the space. It's actually not the space. That's the issue. It's more just like, um, going outside and going to like, you know, the restaurants or like, we didn't actually even go to restaurants that often, but like going to like the movie theater, for instance, or going to a shopping center area and not feeling like you kind of have to like be wary of people and dodge people, you know, it, it that is a little bit, um, sad and also not being able to see like certain friend groups and things like that, because, you know, they're concerned about getting it. And I understand that, that it feels a little bit like, okay, if I were living by myself and Steve wasn't here, I would be incredibly lonely. Like I would be very, very lonely at this point in time, you know? So did you ever like, may I ask the question? You don't have to answer. Did you yeah. ever get married? Because you're supposed to uh, have an engagement party or something. Oh yeah. I didn't know we didn't get married. So oh. we actually had to, we actually were lucky in that our venue was like, yeah, you can move it because of what's going on. So we actually did move it to this coming March. Um, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. I still don't even know if everything's going to be in the right, like, you know, situation for us to even get married and have a ceremony that's bigger than like 30 people. Um, because it's all indoors. <laughs> So, yeah. you know, no, we didn't get married. Um, and we are kind of worried about that, but it sounds kind of sad, but we're sort of like, oh my gosh, we wish we could have just gotten the ceremony over with because like now we have to like deal with this whole yeah. you know. Yeah. But do you think in a way of uh, this pandemic, like it's so unusually putting people together in such this mm -hmm. kind of weird time? Do you feel like uh you know him better? Uh, or do no. you think you're more tolerant of each other? No, that's actually, that's a good question, Ching, because I know that a lot of people have actually ended their relationships and got divorced because they've been stuck together 24 seven. Um, fortunately, uh, I do have to say that Steve and I were kind of really used to cohabitating at this point <laughs> that like, no, I'm being serious that that's literally worse. <laughs> nothing has changed. Nothing has changed other than me feeling like he's like constantly in here when sometimes I kind of like to be by myself in the, in the house, but no nothing has changed from our relationship perspective. Um, like yeah. it's, we actually did get into a fight, um, yesterday though. Oh. But we get, I mean, we get into fights like every now and then, and then we forget about it like 10 mm -hmm. minutes later, but we went, but we were, we did get into a little bit of a fight yesterday. So we do have fights, but it's like yeah. nothing different than before. Oh, okay. Great. Thank you so much for answering. So, 
Do you have, do you have one minute? Let's do a quick uh, uh, okay. rapid fire. Rapid fire. Okay. Ready? Yes. Rapid fire. If I can do it. Yeah. Favorite yeah. color. Blue. Uh, 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 teal. Uh, oh, no, sorry. Sorry. Red or uh, wine. Uh, red or white. I don't drink alcohol because I'm oh, allergic. Really? Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, you, you miss. You miss great. Great pleasure in life. But if I could, then I would do red because I heard that it's healthier. Okay. Yeah, I know. I no. know. So country, country you want to live for six months at a time. Two countries. Oh, that's a good. Oh, man. I don't know. No, uh, I was going to actually say Spain for some reason. That popped into my head because someone said that recently. And then I was going to say Paris, but actually no go on that because um, that has gone down the toilet recently. So I'm going to say maybe Korea. Right. Um, language speak other than English. I mean, I would love to learn Korean, but no, I don't. Yeah. 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 So um, if you were a musical instrument, which one you would like to be? A bass. <laughs> <laughs> Just holding it together. <laughs> like keeping it going. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Okay. So food other than Korean food. Oh, what, what oh food my God. Like? I Chicken tikka masala, holy crap, that is amazing. I could eat that all day. It's probably really bad for you. It has a lot of calories, but it's so delicious. Spicy, not spicy. Spicy. Oh, spicy. <laughs> do, you, do you always have uh, kimchi in your refrigerator? No. <laughs> You're not true Korean. <laughs> well, no, it's like I get it, right? And then, it goes, and then I get it all in two days. So unless I'm prepared to go to the freaking grocery store yeah. every three days, yeah. I can't constantly have it. Yeah. Which book do you read uh, recently? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Your favorite movie? <laughs> Bridget Jones Diary. Oh, okay. All right. So last, uh, tea or coffee? Oh, tea. Oh, um, tea. Are you a vegetarian? Uh, sometimes. Most oh. times. Most times I am. Most of the time I'm a vegetarian. Okay. Thank you, dear. <laughs> We're over minute seven minutes. Sorry. Oh, um. Thank you. No, this is a pleasure, Ching. Um, really <laughs> a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on. You guys, make sure to hit that bell button so that you get notified when she actually posts a video because I have a struggle with that as well. Um, so, But Ching, you're awesome. Um, keep doing what you're doing and you know, keep producing content and putting out films and everything like that. And thank you for being so incredibly positive and supportive. And I'm glad that we were able to finally get to a positive place in our relationship <laughs> since the first co mean comment that you left on my old video. Um, I'm glad that I was so incredibly out of it that I'm, I wasn't aware that you were trying to be me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's funny sorry it wasn't really me but anyway so thank you so much and um, thank you guys for watching and thank you Padgett I know you have tons of things to do so so thank you uh, so next much. time yeah I just have a phone call but yeah thank you guys okay. so much okay thank you I'll see you all later yeah okay. bye, bye bye thank you thank you audience all right that was a good one thank you so much fun interview right indeed all right um so you guys uh, um, uh unless uh you're still here i just wanted to tell you i do talks on monday wednesday 4 p.m so today is monday um so it's been pretty consistent today is the 40th episode of a uh, conversation with a uh, special someone so please keep watching and thank you so much and be safe